This attire will enable me to recover my lost honor. You look like the god of love himself. What a dashing figure. What a well-turned leg. What a shapely foot. For a noble woman of such tender years, you have shown great daring. When passion rules, lovers lose all sense. But I am not led by love. Spurred by the wrongs done to me, I instead follow reason amid the blows of my unyielding fate. All for that first moment of weakness when my faculties were overcome. I discovered that ingrate, the one who repaid my love with disregard, my faith with cruelty, was on his way to Flanders, and so I announced I'd be entering a monastery to keep my family from looking for me. No one except my sister, and she knows the truth. In fact, she'll pretend to visit me to maintain the ruse. <laughs> it may be a mad plan, but at least no one will discover the truth. I made up my mind and bravely crossed the sea to accomplish my purpose or to die in the attempt. By the heavens above, I will be a new Amazon, a courageous Camilla, and revenge myself against this treacherous liar. Listen to you by God. I do believe your new attire has given you a new spirit. I am who I am. The wrongs done to me changed me. Wrongs often lead to strange transformations. You did better than an Ovid story of Ephes. You turned yourself into a man. You became your own goddess. But back to our purposes here. Will you kill him then? I will kill him, by God. <coughs> Vive Dios. Seriously. I swear on God's name. Still swearing, shame on you. Ugh, you're wasting your breath. Oh, who does he think he is? Some kind of Don Juan? Some new Magellan? Be quiet, fool. Oh, please. Why must I always play the coward? Couldn't I once be the brave servant? Is that what's bothering you? Why must servants always be hungry cowards, always play the fool? Can't a man be born daring, even if he is not born noble? What? Can't a servant? be twice as brave as his master. Well said. <laughs> There's a reason I chose you as my friend and not my servant. Ribete of Seville is at your side. So brave he thought nothing of taking on three at once and planting his bloody banner among the green flags of war. But back to the living. What will you do then? We must find my brother, Ribete, or else everything will be lost. If he recognizes you. Impossible. I was just six years old when I left. He'll never remember my face. And as long as he takes me in, my courage will avenge my wrongs. So now you're Don Leonardo, some newfangled Lord Ponce de Leon? Yes. <laughs> That's my name now. Oh, master. Oh, and how the women will be pestering me with love letters to you. Like in a play, where the servant is the go-between and has to facilitate everything. There is no plot, no scene, where a servant with good taste won't come in handy. Without him, there goes Troy! <laughs> there is nothing more delicious than when a servant yokes together the stables in the court or makes a thunderous king laugh at his foolish antics! <laughs> there are people coming! You'd better hide! <laughs> My silence, beautiful Estella, speaks volumes without saying a word. Silent adoration is a language all its own. Already I have confessed to you what only eyes such as yours could have caused in me. Those shining twin lights which offer peace and serenity amid a raging storm. And sweetness when all else is false. Yours is an arresting beauty, a bold charm, and a confident glance. Who else but you could be so cruel and yet so merciful? Who else deals out punishment and reward, life and death? Who overcomes the will, disturbs peace of mind? Rules over pleasure, reigns over volition. Who else but you? 
Who else but you rules over all she beholds like the sun or a god? While you stand aloof, suitor surrender to a sweet death. Pain is pleasure, cruelty alluring, suffering irresistible. Only you could command such delicious torture. The more my soul surrenders to the mercy of those eyes, the more it suffers, the more it is deceived. My soul comes humbly to seek mercy at your fair hand, yet reflected in the crystal of your flashing eyes, it turns away, disabused and ashamed, for those eyes captivate the will and steal all freedom, flaunting their crimes, flattering with their cruelty, making death seem worthwhile. So wise and so lovely, yet so cold in your courtesy, reserved in your praise, sensible in your whims, virtuous in your beauty. Yet there is no blaming you, for mysterious as a goddess, you devastate with your loveliness. What would mar another, no matter how lovely, is cause for praise in you. Only you can wound those at will and delight those you kill. Turn my pain into pleasure. Let me be your humble servant if my love is worthy of you. For if your eyes were to deny me their fortune and favor, the cruel mercy, where else could my soul turn? On earth as it is in heaven, forever and ever, amen. That's some poetry Leonore spouted. It's not bad. Well, at least her verse is penetrating, and she won't be able to go nearly as deep with her prose. Don Leonardo. That's quite enough of your sweet words. I suspect you are playing the nightingale, who sings not out of love or a jealous heart, all yearning and lovelorn, but simply for his love of song. I value your courtesies, and were I assured of your love, I'd grant you my favor. My love will prove itself in time, but mm. you are not wrong to compare my affections to the nightingale's song. As surely and as sweetly as he sets his music stand above the rosebush or the jasmine to sing welcome to the day, it is you he greets, celestial dawn. For your eyes are two suns, and your beauty is the sky. Would not any nightingale lover sing thusly beholding you, and full of grief when you are gone? How glib is your tongue! But enough, Leonardo. No more. Tonight in the courtyard beneath my window, you and I would speak alone. My soul flies to obey you! Goodbye, then. Goodbye. How was that, Ribete? It seems my predictions are unfolding nicely. Estella, blinded by love, believes that she can coax fire from a damp log and two cold stones. But how can the flame of love be struck, even if she is hot for you, <laughs> when you've got no wood to burn? Love is on my side. <laughs> oh, look, here comes the prince. Look how vain he looks. But I need his friendship. What a gem. Mm. Don Leonardo. My prince. Oh, it's been so long since I've last seen you. You do such credit to our friendship. By your life, I swear. Enough. What is there to swear about? How are things with Estella? How are things? Fernando spoke to her, and she told him with such scorn that I ought to leave her alone, that she does not love the prince, nor plans to marry. I am vexed by her slight, I tell you, as my interest in her is already in plain sight. We are friends, are we not? Who else but you alone deserves to know the truth of my love? We have much to discuss. Uh, watch what you're doing. Listen, this is a matter of great importance. Estella has declared herself to me. But for your sake, 
I will not love her, not if my life were at stake, for it is moments like these that are the test of true friendship. <sighs> I would prefer you to possess the love that she has granted me, and so that you may win her. You must go to the courtyard tonight to speak with her, pretending that you are me. What are you saying? Come, you must grant me this favor. I'll explain the rest. Ah. What is Leonor doing? Ah, but she's a woman. What won't she attempt? Even the most proper of women has a touch of the devil about them. Mm. Here he comes. I must speak to him and settle this once and for all. Who goes there? One who goes where he pleases. It's him. A fine response. Well, he'll only pass if I allow it. Who are you to get in my way? The devil. The devil. Nicely played. I am not afraid of a devil. I am like a hundred. Thousand million devils when I get angry. That's quite a legion. Are you mocking me? How can one man defend himself from so many? And so I humbly ask you, if devils listen to that sort of thing, that you send them away. What on earth could they want here? So insolent. He should be glad he found me just as I awaited the chance to speak to Estella. In fact, They'd love to rain down sorrows on ingrates such as you. And if I won't let them? Uh, won't you? Those are feisty devils. Settle down, my man. And you are very ill-mannered. Either you'll have to let me stay here or we'll have to fight. You choose. <laughs> You've gone mad. I've been very patient dealing with such nonsense, but this is no small matter. It'd be too bad to have to kill you, but to leave would be even worse. Men like me are never swayed by petty insults such as these. Besides, I've already given my word to hold this place for a friend. Well, if men such as you kept their word on weightier matters, as reason and justice demand, there'd be no need for revenge. What do people even give their word if they have no intention of keeping it? Is that fine? Is that fitting? Is that polite? Is that nice? This is no lark. He clearly takes me for one who's offended him. Best to leave him in the dark. I do not understand you by God. Well, I understand myself just fine. And it should be clear that I know you since you know that I am speaking the truth. Your boldness shows such courage, such daring. I find myself growing fond of you. Your fond feelings are in vain. This is not the first time that you have grown fond of me. But it was always a fiction since you are treacherous, fickle, Ungrateful, unjust, deceitful, duplicitous, savage, godless, faithless, and untrue to your word. Look, I have given no one cause to speak against me this way, and yet here you are spewing accusations I don't understand. You don't understand, you fickle man? Did you not promise, oblige, plead, persuade, and pledge? Swear by the faith and word of a nobleman, and then, betraying your blood, honor, and obligation, flee at the first chance, disdain without a reason, and leave without even saying a goodbye. You are mistaken. I had better be mistaken. A great man for an escape you are. The rays of the sun would lose their light before I'd fail to keep my word. Well, look, I know one who knows full well when you gave your word. You made a solemn promise never to break it, and the second your desire was satisfied, it was all over! You're mistaken. I had better be mistaken. I do not understand you! I do! Listen! No! I'll hear no more lies from those lips of yours that only lie again! Consider! I'll consider nothing! How considerate were you! Draw your sword! Neither my sense nor my courage can let this pass any longer! There is no other way out! I am your captive, of that I'm certain, but not whether you pine for me, beautiful Estella. I must find out if she favors Leonardo. 
I know that the Prince Ludovico is dying for the love of you. He is rich, noble, royal, in fact. And although love pays no heed to distinctions such as these, I cannot possibly prevail against him. I find the prince tiresome, arrogant, pretentious. I can't even stand to hear his name. Oh, ingrate! My love is clearly more deserving. So many pretty words. You confess your love, then? I do confess it. So then you betrayed her. It is true that I loved her, but know this, I did not offend her honor. You are so fickle, Don Juan. Is it possible that you could forget her without having enjoyed her? Only your beauty is the cause of My that. My beauty? Oh, that is a pretty excuse. If you must always love the next beautiful woman, you will only ever trade one for another. Listen, please. I will show off my wit. What of Don Juan? I don't like him. Nothing could persuade me to love him. Don Leonardo, I love only you. That will drive me to desperation. For Stella to know of this, I must be mad. Speak, Don Juan, speak. <sighs> Hear me out, Estella. Like one who sees the morning star gild the horizon before the light of dawn and cannot but love its shining glow, only to call it dim when he sees how the beauty of the sun rises so bright and pure to illuminate the sky, so it was for me. I worshipped in Leonore the lovely fire of a star. I was a moth to her flame. But once I glimpsed in you, the shining likeness of the sun I saw my previous love was but shadows and flickering light. Leonor is a fading star, and you a resplendent sun. I know well that Don Juan has a claim on your affection. I'd be lying if I denied it, and yet it was. Hear me out. Speak. Allow me to explain. As one who in a shady forest or garden comes upon a pure, fragrant, lovely field of flowers of every possible color and is drawn by the beauty of the rose only then to find a more delicate jasmine and so must leave the rose behind, so it was for me. I saw Don Juan, a handsome rose, and out of gratitude accepted him as my suitor. Then, Don Leonardo, at the sight of you, all my senses drawn to you, I chose what I found most beautiful. For though I may esteem the rose, I find in you the jasmine, a more fragrant delight. So Leonore was just a twinkling star, announcing the sun to come. That's right. This is tearing me apart. Listen. I'm all ears. The wandering traveler treasures the pure light of the morning star in the darkness of the night. It alone lights the path and offers him hope. And even when the sun's rays finally do reach him, he remains grateful to the star, that beacon in the storm. Leonor was the star that led you through the dark night of your love. She was your guide. And you, ingrate that you are, soon forgot the spark of its beautiful light long before you'd ever fallen from my radiance. Had you not forsaken the star long before you'd ever seen the sun? That's a strange metaphor, Estella, to compare a rose to Don Juan's courage and gallantry. Not so. But listen. He wasn't wise who, among the flowers, preferred the jasmine to the rose. Its perfume does not last once it starts to wither. The rose maintains a strong, sweet smell, fragrant to the very end, so that even in death one may call it beautiful. The rose is indeed the better flower. The jasmine is not as fine. Presented with rose and jasmine, you welcome the brief splendor of the jasmine, its fragrant snow, which the spring wind will blow away. But then, once you see the coveted rose, its proud, beautiful grace, you'll surely prefer it to my love. 
The jasmine is but a lowly flower. The rose is full of fragrance. A nice bit of sophistry. Forgive me. I must say what I feel. Go. Go on back to Spain. An honorable man should not deign to deceive such a noble woman. My love for you redoubles my feelings of disdain. I've forgotten her, yet this is the reward I get. Then lose all hope, Don Juan. I only wanted to see you in order that I might disabuse you. You make such easy wordplay of my pain, Don Leonardo. And yet, I'll remain firm in my affection. Nothing will stop me from loving you. Whether a jasmine or a rose, I will merit fortune's crown. Farewell. Dawn is breaking, clear and radiant. Stay, for your eyes rival the sun. More flattery. Look for me later. And farewell. I am blind without your light. How could Estella respond like that? How could she be so disdainful? My heart pounds as though it would leave the prison of my breast. My battling desires will cost me my very life. Foolish thoughts afflict my soul, lost in doubt and chaos. <sighs> Leonore is to blame. What should I do now, ungrateful Estella? Though you may now offend, ungrateful Estella. My ploys will win you in the end, if love will not do the trick. But why do I falter? Where is my courage, my strength? I will love the Countess Estella. I will stand firm against all others. I'll treasure her denials as my greatest favors. Estella's fury and anger, her hatred, her loathing, her tepid reception, her brutal rejection, all conspire against me. Let my life end here amid all this pain. I'll hazard my life and a torment so brief. Bold and daring and firm in my purpose, I'll stand up to her fickleness.